Ignition sequence starts. Tom, how are you feeling, buddy? I'm good, I'm good, I'm excited. <laughs> it's nice to be back. Oh, fantastic. Really excited about this one. This is a special edition of the Chock and Roll Show featuring Chef Thomas Bentham, who is on a mission with Canoe Against Cancer. You've probably seen that on social media with his brother, George. So he's not only a rower, he's a very talented chef. And we're going to, we've got a treat, a few treats in store for you. Are you all watching? Are you all excited? Are you ready to see this deliciousness? Tom, we're ready for this one tonight. Yeah, it's, it's a nice one, this. It's, it's bringing a little bit of the reason why we're doing Canoe Against Cancer. So a bit of my dad, who was also a chef, the reason I followed him into the kitchen, which, which is really nice about, obviously, yeah. Ollie and you and your mm, dad as well. So that's true. It's really nice to have your support. We're bringing that through. So my dad's signature dessert dish being a chocolate roulade, kind of a play on a Swiss roll. Yeah. Um, but yeah. this is the Chock and Roll show, so... We're bringing a bit of Ollie's yes. chock and roll to it. That's right. Chock and roll, holy grail twist to it. I'm going to flick that so you can see. Um, this beautiful take on a Cadbury's mini roll. Look at how good that looks. Well done there, Tom. That looks fab. So we're excited to share that recipe with you all. Maybe and again, try. this is a really simple one. This one, my dad loved it. It's a gluten-free recipe. It covers a few ingredients. Really simple to bake. We're going to do a few different versions. So, yeah, we're going to have a play with some mini ones and do some little chocolate rolls. We're also going to do a bit more of a bigger showstopper, holy grail version, get everything in there. It's great to do with the kids. I'm looking forward to doing it with my daughters and sort of, yeah. you know, it's just one of those as a family. You can just have a bit of fun. It could be really high end. You know, if you're having a nice dinner party, yeah. bring in a bit of sort of alcohol flavored cream, tart it up a little bit, make it a bit more special. And then again, it could just be a nice, simple Swiss roll for. You, you do make it look simple, but that's hopefully what people will take away from this today is that you, it can be very easy if you follow Tom's steps and we can share the recipe with you. But, you know, you'll see the whole process and uh, yeah, something that you can do with the family. So do let us know. I can see that Leah is watching. How are you doing, Leah? Hello. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Give this a share. We're live on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. So give this a share into your community uh, if you think that somebody may like to understand how to make a chocolate roulade um, or, a, or a Swiss roll or maybe at Christmas this would be a Yule log, um, share it. Share the choc love. And, um, yeah, we're going to tell a few stories, aren't we, whilst, whilst we're doing this, the reason yes. why we're doing this. So we'll, we'll delve into the why. But first of all, the what. It's the, it's the chocolate roulade, Tom. So really, this dish breaks down into sort of two elements. First of all, we're going to make a, a gluten-free um, sponge, which is effectively almost like a... I will struggle for the word. You go on camera, yeah, everything yeah. leaves straight <laughs> away. Um, but it's almost like a meringue-based sponge. So right. we're going to split the eggs. We're going to put the yolks and the sugar into a bowl. We'll whisk them to the sort of light and yellow. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to whisk the egg whites up to high peak. As I did warn Ollie beforehand, the best way to test if your eggs are at high peak, is to hold it over a wonderful volunteer's I thought head. you were going to test me then. I was trying to <laughs> rack in my brains thinking, what's the test? And then I yeah, realised, I'm the, I'm the human the test. test. Yeah. Okay. Then, obviously, we're just going to bake it out. So once we've whisked our egg whites and our yolks, we bind them together with the cocoa powder, 
pop it onto a greaseproof tray. Ollie's just got his little oven here, which is yeah. an absolute powerhouse. Oh, yeah. Um, it's amazing what you can do in that little oven. You've proven this for me. So. so at home, it's going to take about six minutes today. It takes a little bit longer at home. It's about eight right. minutes at 180. Make right. it through. Let it cool. Oh, it is a powerhouse. I thought you Yeah, did. no, it's... Because it's, uh, it's, so, it is so small, it, it's, it's heating up it's, super quick. It's, and... it's an intense little beast. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, Russell Hobbs have done their job there. <laughs> Um, but without further ado, yeah, let's, let's start Amazing. rocking and rolling. Yeah, let's chock and roll, baby. So obviously, <laughs> um, sort of five eggs. We're just going to split them. So between two bowls. So we put our whites into our mixer. Obviously, you can do this with a ham whisk as well. Yeah, yeah. Never crack eggs on TV. No, do it at yeah. home, one-handed, no issues. Yeah, but as soon as the camera's on. the show, on. Yeah. camera's on. So I guess it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of egg white in with... You are going to get a little bit of egg white in with Yeah, a little bit. You're just trying to get the majority of the eggs separated about. Do you normally crack eggs one-handed or do you go with the two? I can crack eggs one-handed. However, the when, you, when you separate them <laughs> about, I'll, I'll split the yolk, no doubt. Um, it's never about, you know, how fast you do it. It's just about taking the time and enjoying it. I'm, as, as uh, a father of two wonderful daughters, uh, Olivia who, and Emily, who are watching, by the way, because Hannah's just commented. So hello, Olivia and Emily. And you've seen this man in action. Uh, yeah, Hannah says that Olivia can highly recommend Daddy's famous chocolate roulade. I love that. It's, it's nice. a proper family recipe. Yeah, it's going it's... down the, the generations. And I think it's one that, you know, for me, the, the ceremony of eating and cooking is sort of something that, as gets lost these days and, and yeah. you know as people eat less at a table it's it's really nice and important you know everyone's pair everything together it shouldn't just be one person in the kitchen yeah you know, make it fun do it all together yeah, everyone can have a play you know and, and everyone has their place within that communal eating yeah you've all played your part someone's just asked are they large eggs uh these are just medium eggs yeah um yeah if it's large eggs it, it doesn't make a great great deal of difference okay. Okay. i tend to always use um medium eggs yeah, uh, for most things. So obviously we've just got a little mixer, but again, a little ham whisk as long as we take them up to high peaks. In with what our does yolks, high peaks mean, by the way? What does that term mean? So as it whisks, you're putting air into the egg whites. Right. And that extends yeah. it through. So you've got soft peaks where when you lift the whisk out of it, they'll fall a little bit. Okay. And then high peaks, it's steady. So it's so not air it's a So low shape. peaks, it's, it's so holding its shape slightly, but still yeah. falling in. So it's still yeah, just yeah. in a little bit. So well, a high peak is, is not going to move. It's not going to fall in the top, right? And that's why you can tip it over your volunteer's head. Hey, we will going for that. <laughs> so into our egg yolks, we've got five dessert spoons of caster sugar. Love it. By the way, anybody watching this who's thinking, are Ollie and Tom available for corporate events? You know, hey, could be possible this time. We've got people joining us on LinkedIn. I'm just thinking... So that's how many spoons? Five spoons. Five, five dessert spoons. Yeah. And we just want to whisk it up so we get that nice and aerated. We make it nice and light. So you can see it changing colour now as that air's coming into it. It's doing a lighter colour. Yeah. And that's where you're getting. Obviously, you know, depending on your eggs, it might be slightly richer if they're sort of a, a particular high range, free range. Unfortunately, with the current moment, uh, they're all barn. Okay. Um, right. right. I don't know if anyone's seen that, obviously. No, because I don't of, and things so that'll lighten that up then obviously we've just got our mixer and we're just going to start to whisk those whites so that's the egg whites over there yolks and sugar right here how do you crack your eggs by the way is it one-handed or is it two-handed let me know in the comments has anyone got any tips when it comes to i don't know not getting the shell from the egg have you got What's the tip on not getting so the, the, the best thing, especially if you want to crack it one-handed, is obviously split your fingers. Yeah. The best on a flat surface, because if you crack it on a corner, you right. can break the shell in. Okay. And then it's just pulling it apart. Yeah. And um, but just take your time. Most yeah. most people try and rush it and take too long. Right. One of my best tips though, when it comes to counting eggs out, is yeah. put the shells back in the box where they were. And that yeah. way you can count back when you forget how many eggs you've got. How many eggs you've got. Also, this tip, you'll know this one, but if you do get a bit of shell in, the best way to get the shell out is actually using a bit of shell. Yeah. Because it seems to, like, attract it, doesn't it? It, like, magnetises. And it, and it cuts through that light. Oh, right. So it's, so it's kind of it. sharp. Yeah, love that. So just whilst our egg whites whisk. Oh, uh, George has just said that. Use the shell to get the shell out. I promise uh, I didn't see you coming, George. I'm not just pinching that off you. He's definitely pinched. <laughs> How do you, George? So I've just added two dessert spoonfuls. The cocoa powder and um, just your standard cocoa powder 
into our egg mix. And then we're just going to give that a little whisk. Looks so good already. And you can start to smell that as well. Chocolatey. This is fun. Who's enjoying this? So yeah, and you've yes. got a nice texture through there. You can see it's thickened up as well. Is that the, with the cocoa well. powder? It's giving it like a thicker. I'm whisking that air into it yeah. as well. Yeah. It's kind of moussey, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome to the Chalk and Roll Show. If you just joined us, Chef Thomas Bentham um, making a chocolate roulade. And Tom and his brother George, who is in the comments, are rowing 185 miles. Oh, here we go. Here we so, go. as you we'll can come see, come back to that. We'll come back to that. Obviously, it's thickened up now. Okay. So we can. Uh Sorry, let's <laughs> tell when they're at stiff peak. The important thing now is that we don't want to knock the air out of this mixture. So when we're going to add the next two dessert spoonfuls of cocoa powder to this one, we're going to fold it in. Now, my dad always taught me this. It's quite a nice recipe, as I said, you know, um, and as Ollie was just about to allude to, we're, we're doing this big canoeing event, which will be yeah. over 290 kilometers. Uh, it's on the morning kilometers, 185 <laughs> miles. Um, from, well, effectively coast to coast, Morecambe yeah. Bay, uh, where my dad learned to sail and, and really learned his sort of passion for food. Mm. Um, and he mm. really sort of picked that up um, traveling as well, but food being so important. He learned his passion for food there. Well, he, well, yeah, that was when, when he started getting involved with the sea. Obviously, it was like right. Morecambe Bay shrimps, you know. It's, oh, it's all seafood, that seafood, right, right. and it was a huge passion. Uh, my family mm. originally came from Blackpool, so Roberto's Oyster Bar, mm. um, which, you know, was a very, very big soft spot for my grandfather. So the first place I ever had an oyster, mm. I remember being young and my dad taking me there and going, you know. I wonder whether you could compare some of those on the on the seashore, like, before you set on, up on your Happy voyage. Up. I don't know, just do some, like, cooking outdoors. So... Um, as we were saying, the most important thing here is to not knock the air out of this. So okay. we'll cross through and then scoop round. What you don't want to do is whisk it right. or right. beat it. The more okay. you beat it, the more we're going to knock the air out. So just gently bring it through. So cross bring it through, round. round the edge. Okay. And we just want to help incorporate that cocoa powder into our high peak egg whites. Whilst maintaining that air inside the mixture as much as possible. It actually sounds really cool, actually. So, so serious. You get the microphone right close to this and do the uh, ASMR. So we don't need the whisk now. So I'm just going to pop yeah. that over there. Yeah. Say. And now what we're going to do is we're going to combine our mixture. So we're going to add the egg whites into the cocoa powder and yolk mix. But what I'll do first is I'll just add a first spoonful. So again, we're lightening this mix because we know the weight of that's going to start to take the air out of that. Okay. So again, just a little by little. Little by little. This is looking good. So this is your father's recipe, and it's very appropriate for the chocolate and roll show because obviously my passion for chocolate comes from from my dad, uh, and the, the 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 mission that you're driving, the campaign that you and your brother are driving at the moment is um, in your father's legacy, of course, and uh, to raise money for Macmillan and East Cheshire Hospice. Um, yeah, so Morecambe is the, the, start, the point. start point. So Glass and Docks, the start point. And then we're going to paddle down to Liverpool and then across to Manchester, through Manchester, before heading our way out to Hull. I think the thing I'd like to say, though, you know, obviously my dad is a chef. Food was was his real big passion. And, yeah. you know, yeah. he dined from the finest tables to really sort of, you know, the, the camp stove mm. in a field yeah. where he used to enjoy nothing more than, you know, having the finest three course dinner off, off a campfire. And he was such a passionate, enthusiastic I love person. the idea of that, by the way. Oh, he actually do that. Like, yeah, he, 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 he would, if, oh. if it wasn't a three course meal, you know, camping wasn't about roughing it. It was about dining better than anyone else in the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that. Um, and, and he loved it and the way it brought people together. And I think, you know, me and George, both really appreciate how cruel. So, so my dad passed away every three years of September yeah. of a, a cancer that started in the, the bottom of, of the very top of his stomach right. and he lost his ability to swallow. So for his final sort of time where, where he was passing, and this is mm. where Macmillan mm. and East Cheshire Hospice really came in, yeah. he lost his biggest driving love in the world, which yeah. Yeah. was the ability to eat food yeah. and, and sort yeah. of engage with that. And you know, then they gave him meal replacement shakes and, and you know he even said, I don't want to be here if this is... 
right this is where it's at and mm, mm, you know it's such mm. a hard thing to try and support someone who you know is losing one of their only real major enjoyments absolutely yeah i mean it's so, crazy but i mean what you're doing is amazing it's giving something back to these charities that have been there that were there for him well, that's why right. mcmillan were phenomenal and, yeah. and unfortunately you know it's, it's one in two so everyone at mm, some point mm. will, will need these people to, to support them yeah. and yeah. You know, I was very naive beforehand of not knowing exactly what they did. And, and Damien, the nurse who came in, you know, really talked to my dad and explained right. it through to him, let him know, yeah. you know, what was there. My dad really didn't want to go near the hospice. He was right. terrified of that. And, and that was a very hard thing to see as a son. Mm -hmm. your, your father, mm -hmm. you know, facing his fear of major operations and, yeah. you know, chemo, yeah. which, which he had a really, really torrid time with. Right. And yeah. then it was, you know, the ability for, you know, the hospice and, and, and Macmillan who, who just yeah. wrapped around yeah. him and, and us, you know, yeah. it was it's a very hard time for the yeah. family and, yeah. Yeah. you know, everyone's got to say nothing you can do is ever going to be right, right in that situation. Yeah. And, and they were just there as that supporting yeah. shoulder, really. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I, I know I said this last time we were on the show, me and my yeah. brother were, were at East Cheshire Hospice and, you know, Macmillan and them worked so close together and yeah. sort of on their wall, you know, seven and a half thousand pounds a day, um, <sighs> you know, for, for work that once you experience what they do. Well, that's it. You've experienced what they do. And I think it's phenomenal. Is it um, seven thousand pounds for each charity? Seven and a half. Seven so and a half. fifteen thousand yeah. pounds we're aiming to raise. That, we're already at a fantastic total. <laughs> of just over two thousand pounds as well so right. you know yeah. with, with your help getting, getting the word yeah. out and um, sort of we, we ran a really good raffle campaign that yeah. my wife organized that, yeah. that raised it a great 900 pounds so thank Fantastic. you to everyone who sort of participated in that from from the yeah. phenomenal businesses that that jumped in with, without really even needing to ask them and offered right. up great prizes wow. to Fantastic. you know all the people who bought tickets and and yeah. sort of entered to win yeah um, it is a big journey. Obviously, there is yeah. part of this for my dad, but part yeah. of it as well is just to say thank you to you know Macmillan. Yeah, it's that Hospice. gesture, isn't it? Of like, yeah, you're taking the action and you're going out and doing all of this, but it's it's such a big, big gesture, and I'm sure that they'll really appreciate that. It's one worthy of them. Me and my brother, yeah. we right. we yeah, right. okay. and, and I'm sure yeah. you know he's going to come on and, and discuss it. And, and yeah, I think we we joked about doing a canoe. Neither of us had ever canoed before yeah, or right. had anything to do with it, so yeah. it was. Kind of the first idea we went, nah, we're not doing that. Right. I don't want to do a massive canoe. Let's let's not, because you know, we don't really know what's involved. And right. the more we went through ideas, that just became the most befitting yeah, thing. And back to that because it, it was the, the most challenging. I guess. It's it, it was the thing that scared us most. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> neither of us are, are keen canoers who were, were looking for it. It's a fantastic sport. Yeah. I really yeah. love canoeing. Um, and I'd say it's great for families. Yeah. Just Doing it for eight hours a day when you've got to get from A to B and trundle along, you know, is is hard. I've got to give yeah, a shout out. Yeah. We've, we've met some wonderful people as well, and it's lovely yeah. how everyone shares their stories. That the, the yeah. people over at Walt and Matilda, yes. you know, they're always there straight away. Coffees and, and you know, then a lovely sight when you paddle around the corner. Oh, it's there. Oh my god! You know, it's... Light at the end of the tour. Pizza, coffee. But oh. it is. We've done a lot of training so far yeah. along the Macclesfield Canal, so yeah. so running between sort of Sutton and, and Marple. Um, right. punching in sort of 24 miles yeah. in a day, which, which right. has been a big grueling sort of distance. That's what we'll have to average every day. Um, and I think, you know, at the end of it, I, I couldn't even string a sentence together. I was, <laughs> I was just so tired. Wow. Um, and we'll be doing that nine days, nine sections back to back. I mean, that is going to be one journey to follow. So if you're on Instagram, because it, it, will you be showing on Facebook as well? Or it is on Facebook as yeah, well. Yeah. But I, I think so will the enjoy. stories go on Facebook? Because I'm, I'm excited to see your stories. Not that I want to see you suffer or anything like that, but in a sinister way, it's going to be fun to watch your stories during that time, isn't it? Nine days of solid rowing. And, um, you know, I'll absolutely shattered at the end of each day, then back up, energised, ready to go again. And you'll see you going through all of these different places, like you say, going through through Liverpool, through Manchester, um, picking up maybe some souvenirs on your way. I don't know the people that you're going to meet. So that is going to, there's going to be so many stories. Off so it's about the people. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, we can, we can catch up. We've, we've met people all along the route already and right. we're going to start doing more training on those routes. So, oh, right. you know, it'd be yeah. lovely, you know, when you're doing it, so we start on the 12th of September. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll probably be about four or five days, but we'll be passing through Manchester. You know, if you're free, yeah, let us know. You know, give us a the message. The 12th of September was was that the date three years ago? So my dad passed on the 21st, so we all finished when the day before. Ah, okay, yeah, his yeah. his passing. Right, um, right. 
And I'll be there to celebrate with you at the at the finish anyway. You're going for, the, you're going for the Prosecco. I'm going for the Prosecco at the end. Going for, I'll be bringing you some chocolate, but I'll obviously make sure that you're loaded up with chocolate for energy. Energy. So you this holy grail. Yes. That is the, it's going to be the secret to the success, boys. Sugar. Yeah. <laughs> sugar and sugar. <laughs> so what we've got now, we've just got a, a little tray with some grease proof paper. Yeah. And we've got our mix. Again, you just want to maintain that air in it. We're just going to give it a little spread out. So this is obviously quite a small tray, but you can do bigger trays as you want. You can go as thick as you would like. Obviously, the thicker the sponge might need slightly longer to cook. Okay. But we're just going to pop these in and then just spread it to the corners. It's okay if it's not the neatest because we're going to tidy yeah. it up afterwards once we've finished with it. So nice and thin all the way up to the... Nice and thin or nice and thick? What would you say? It's, it's like in it's between, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably the thickness of sort of a two pound coin. Okay. Um, just where it settles across. Obviously get it nice and even where you can. Yeah. But we're going to roll it, so we're not going to see that anyway once it's there. It just helps give it a more even thing. Chock and roll. Once we've got our oven, obviously we just want to make sure that's preheated. And then we can pop that. Oh, lovely. In. So Maybe that the time. is on temperature wise. So 180 degrees. Yeah. This one's slightly lower because it's slightly hot. Yeah. And it needs eight minutes to sort of 10 minutes. Okay. Love it. And then that just allows it to run through. Fantastic. So yeah, you definitely do make it look easy. But guys, the whole recipe is here if you, if you know watching and listening closely. But we can share that with you in the comments. So let us know if you'd like us to share this with you in the comments. That could be if you're watching it live now or if you're watching it on catch up, just drop us a message, tag me and Tom in. And we can share that with you. And oh, for a donation, of course. If, if, if you make it as well, tag yeah. us in that. You yeah, know, we, exactly. we've been using hashtag canoe against cancer. So yeah. anything yeah. you want to tag us in there, I think there's a few people have spotted us paddling down the canoe and we've sort of right. yeah. kind of like an advert shouting back at them. Um, cool. But yeah, tag us in it. it it's, it's nice. It's I think that's the important thing that I like about this sort of, you know, odyssey that we've set off on. Odyssey. It's, yeah. you yeah. know, it, it's the paddles one thing, but get in there has been as big a journey, you know, it's, you know, I've had to learn a lot about social media. George yeah. is also too, you know, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to share something so personal yeah. and be so open. So it's taking those new skills on and sort of sharing it out. It's a lot of going through your fears, isn't it? And I think, I think you definitely get a lot of inspiration from your dad. He was a people person. He loved life and, uh, you know, food. So I think that's what's great about this recipe because it ties in, your love for food, which comes from your dad, and, and yeah. the same with mine. Um, so, yeah, it's good fun. We have some amazing conversations, don't we, where we literally go, you know, talk about the chocolate cigar, and Tom will say, have you ever thought about doing the end and, like, a smoky flavour to it? And and we have these crazy, like, brainstorms, don't we? But so, it's just, yeah, it's just it's trial and error. It's trying something, seeing what the result's like, and, and yeah, then coming back yeah. to it. And if it doesn't work, doesn't you know, work, every, every chef will test the recipe hundreds of times before yeah. they hit the menu. So. Yeah. Don't expect it to be right the first Good time. Thing. Don't do one come down with me. Oh, I'm just going to try this dish for my yeah, first yeah, time. Yeah. You know, it's it's practicing it and it's building that repertoire and, and having yeah. fun with it. You can make little seasonal tweaks. We'll talk about this in a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the thing, this this was the dish when, when you asked me to come on was, was yeah. straight away. Straight away, because that was his go-to special. Wherever he works as a chef, it was on the menu. It's one of his signature dishes. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a big fan of it. I remember we did signature evenings. My dad was very keen about giving back. So every year he'd yeah. go back to the uh, Macclesfield College and host an evening and, and teach yeah. students. He was very passionate yeah. about games. So he'd yeah. often, you know, teach them to pluck or prepare yeah. um, wow. venison. But then, you know, we'd go in, take an evening over. And then once yeah. I sort of become a chef and followed in those footsteps, oh, yeah. I went back and sort of supported him through. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's a dish that means a lot to me. One, it's delicious, um, yeah, which is always a winner is. with I can any vouch dish. For that. <laughs> um, but two, yeah, it's really nice to sort of, you know, share that as, as you know, part of the Canoe Against Cancer thing and come on here and bring your version of what you do with your dad. Yeah. The fun yeah. that you guys have. Um, yeah. And it's lovely coming to Chocolate Street. Oh, your it was dad is fun. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, was, Simon, yeah. Actually, he was skipping around in a wig the other he day. He was. But, well, well, <laughs> we'll probably not mention that one too much. I don't know where he got that wig from. It's not mine. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame we can't bring a picture of that up actually because I didn't make it to social media don't know why perhaps it's, it's not too late maybe I will maybe not um, maybe we'll have a rerun with it <laughs> once the sponge is cooked obviously we've just got on a bit of grease proof paper we just allow that to chill what we want to do is we're going to lay a tea towel down and lay that down and um, use a clean tea towel I'm then just going to spread a little bit of caster sugar on there as well which is just going to go onto the coating and is that practical reason in case it's there's moisture or 
No, because it's, it's just on sticking the back of the grease proof now. Yeah. It just yeah. helps give it yeah. that colour. It gives it that little speckles in. It makes it oh, look nice okay. and pretty. So yeah. what we're going to do now, and you always find one corner that's slightly better and easier to start, we just effectively start to peel back our grease proof really paper. And again, just take your time. And as I said, this is where you'll lose those uneven edges that are possibly on the outside. Yeah, because you're going to trim those anyway, aren't you? I think we're going to give them a little trim. Cheeky trim. I always find it's easier if you keep the paper as tight as possible. So you want to pull at the lowest rather than pulling up high. Okay. Pull it as flat as possible. And if you need to, if you think it's starting to stick, you can just hold behind it and then just keep it nice and steady and just give it a little pull. But don't rush it. It's always quite a relief, isn't it, when it just works perfectly like that. So look at that. Look at that. You've done that before. I've done a few of these before. <laughs> Then obviously we just want to trim it up. So just going to take any excess off the sides. Can you reuse those bits at all or do you just have to eat them? Dad used to do a wonderful um, like rumble. Oh, so right. if you save all these bits up, you obviously need quite a few, but when you're doing yeah. it in the kitchens and you're doing it for sort of 60, 70 portions, you get quite a lot. But you can yeah. do the same with any cake mix, anything like that. Yeah. Break them all up in a bowl, add a little bit of rum to them, a little bit of chocolate, ball them up. Oh. And then roll them in chocolate. Right. Like little, then... little truffles, almost like small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a little cake-based truffle. Right. Love it. Beautiful. Pop. I hope you Pop have a nice back. time watching. Just drop us a comment, let us know, um, you know, that you're watching. But yeah, I can see lots of people are. So thank you. So I believe this is the point. I'm going to pass it over to you. So normally yeah. from my side. Yeah. If we're going to finish this, nice alcohol-based cream would have been my dad's go-to. Right. So maybe a bit of cherry filling in there and then like a bit of Kirsch through some whipped cream, a little bit of icing sugar to sweeten it mm -hmm. and just roll it up. But again, you can make that whatever flavor you want. A bit of marmalade in there, chocolate and orange, as right. Ollie will tell you, is a wonderful Ooh, pairing. Yes, yes. Put marmalade across it, little cream through it, and then roll it up and ready to go. Fantastic. The world is your oyster. So how are we going to holy grail this? Hello to Heather watching there. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to holy grail it. Yeah, it's going to be a chock and roll spin on this classic um, family recipe. So it's like two family recipes combined. Um, so it's going to be a chocolate ganache, milk chocolate and white, no, milk chocolate and cream with some, <laughs> some sea salt and some crushed Oreo and some toffee pieces to make the holy grail ganache. So I'm just going to whip that up now. So let me just... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to completely wing it here. Yeah, I'll probably do a bit more than we need, but literally double cream. It's one part cream, two parts chocolates. So I'm just going to get a little bit of chocolate from the machine here. And then give that a really good mix in. And then add. So you're doing this at home just to melt the chocolate, just in a, a bain-marie, so a pan of some boiling water. Yeah, exactly. Um, just get the chocolate so it's it's melted, you know, obviously he gradually heat it so it doesn't burn bain-marie or even microwave, just gradually heating it. And then uh, ideally what I would normally suggest is temper it, but really when you mix it with cream, it doesn't really matter too much. If the chocolate's slightly warm, it's actually a good thing because gives you a little bit longer. You don't want it to be setting too quickly. So crushed Oreo, toffee pieces, sea salt, whip that all up. You could really add anything you wanted in at this stage if you were you doing could. chocolate filling. Splash of whiskey, maybe, splash of rum. Yeah, that rum would be good actually. So should I just go for it here then, Tom? Just yeah, smooth so that out. just give it a nice little spread out. Is it too thick? What do you think? No, yeah, we'll make that work. We can a palette knife on the side if you need it. Yeah, you know what happened to it, obviously. Um, smooth that out now. Right, do you want it right the way up to the to the corner? Yeah. On each side. I have to be quick with this now. Do it together. It's always helpful. See, this is where we say cooking in twos. Yeah, doing exactly. Doing it together exactly. makes just makes it easier. It's nice to have some fun. I'm sure, I'm sure Olivia and Emily at home will be... Uh, Bailing me out of it at some they point, help spreading it through. Yeah. Oh, not yet, but they will do, won't they? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just, it's a really important thing. Olivia loves cooking, and it always makes me laugh on a Sunday. You know, she'll 
<laughs> she'll always pick out the best chicken for mummy and it's yeah. you know it's it's when it comes to serving you know and it's just having that involved. it we must be in her blood is that because you're talking about food and she's watching you cooking at home and stuff I, I, I think so i think as well it's because i try and get her involved as well i mean hannah's yeah. really good hannah's done a lot of baking with her as well right, whilst at work so yeah it's just having that involvement all the way through yeah so we ready to roll this now we're ready to roll let's chuck and roll so again reason we're on a tea towel just so we can bring it through Bring that back and as soon as it comes over we just want to tuck that first side over and then once we're there oh. we're just going to pull the tea towel back so satisfying i oh, see so what you mean about the sugar now and we got that and then just give it a little press just to seal it on that Keep edge. It in place wow that. Well, well, just we tidy are. the end off. Oh, this looks absolutely amazing. All right, just my mouth is watering right now. And so that's just to kind of tidy it, tidy it up. Yeah, yeah, just make it nice and tidy. And then what we'll do, I'll take a little slice off it, which I'm going to dress up in a sort of a bit more of a dinner party piece. Mm. And then just tidy that end off as well. We go all chefy, we'll do it on an angle. Yes. You put put your sandwiches on an angle as well, like you could charge an extra two pounds, I find. There that. you go, exactly. <laughs> Premium. So we'll put that on there. Is this where I get to go? I go this is where this. we're gonna dress it. Yeah, so again, yeah. we talk about fun, you know, it's very similar to a Swiss roll, a Yule log, you know, yeah. if you go in season all that time of year. So yeah, you can add your chocolate to it, but yeah. you know, depending on how you may go about making this, mm -hmm. depends really on what you want to do. We can make a small yeah. one we can do mini ones yeah you know we can dip those you can go sort of bigger you know little afternoon sort of afternoon tea piece or again yeah, yeah. you know you can pre-plated up in the fridge which we're going to do i'm just going to do some strawberries and nice. sort of a little mix to go through there so yeah you've oh, got the freedom right. to play so what That's are you going to do so i'm just going to get so i've got some tempered milk chocolate and i'm going to just cover the top so that we've got this this sort of holy grail effect on the top there with the the crushed Oreo, the toffee pieces, the sea salt. So we're going to have that one in across the top, but I'm going to just drop some little drips going down because you presented it so beautifully there. I want to keep the, the ends showing with the obscure cut. Those chef, like you say. Um, I just need to find what I've done with my scissors. Here we go. Right, so yeah, just tempered milk chocolate. Set the end off. I'll flick to the overhead cam so you can see who wants who wants a bite. Who wants a bite? I like how you can see the sugar through it. It's like a shiny. So I'll give that a nice little turn Take around. That around so you can you can see so you can see the, the drips coming down you got a nice contrast between the the chocolate and the the roulard um outer with the with the sugar yeah look pretty good Good fun, this, but it's just basically me and you playing around in the kitchen uh, whilst just happen to be live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Oh, not Instagram. Where are we? Yeah, we're everywhere on YouTube as well. well I think this is, you know, I think we both agree with it with the ethos of food here. You know, it's it's like your your corporate events and where you do those where you get involved with family. So it's about yeah. having fun. Food's yeah. all about. You know, expressing yourself, interaction, and, you know, releasing yeah. a bit of stress, having some yeah. fun, and, and it's a great thing to do together. You know, it's it, it allows you to just just have a play. You know, if it's not right, it just means you can work on it, and I think that's the greatest thing. Like figuring it out. There's a yeah. chef called Thomas Keller, uh, huh. most famously made the uh, ratatouille for the mm. film Ratatouille, oh. um, yeah. and and he he spoke about perfection. As, you know, he has like 50 chefs work for him, and no one gets paid. They all just go to work for him just just to experience what he does. Wow! And he very much, you know, will say that perfection can never be reached because whatever you yeah. do, you can mm. always improve on it. Love that. So Love that. it doesn't matter whether you're the greatest chef in the world, yeah, or if yeah. you've never cooked before. It's having a go, learning, and it's your interpretation, isn't it? There's no right and wrong. Just go for it. And just 
burn, burn as you go. Yeah, and then and then you, you know I'll, I'll do it every time. You make something, you go. Oh, next time I might do that. You know, like the cigars. We're, we're talking. You know, it's like an yeah. evolution. You, yeah. you do something, you're happy yeah. with it, and then you go. Oh, I could do a little bit more. Or why, why don't we add this? And yeah. I think that's the fun it's of hard. it. It never stops. The ingredients change, yeah. seasonality, and you know this. You know, it's chocolate today, but again, it, it could be the, the marmalade, it could be strawberries, it could be blackberries in, in yeah. sort of September, you know, it could be plums, you know, if you've yeah, got a damson tree or, you know, someone with trees like that. Whatever's in season. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you that fun. Have you made your own jam before? I have made my own jam. Yeah. So, yeah, jam. Marmalade. Uh, yes, my dad used to make marmalade and jam, both my grand as well, so I was very lucky. Uh, my mum's mum, she was a very, very good cook and, and right. kept the lather, so, yeah, she made a lot of things, but... In the kitchens, you know, my dad was very much sort of nose to tail cooking, so he wanted to use everything, and it was all about no waste. No waste. You know, how, how can we get the best? You know, you, you go out, you get these wonderful ingredients. It's about showcasing it, and you know, letting that speak on the plate. Right, love it. So for microwaving the chocolate, you're just mixing the bag. I see there. Yeah. So I've literally had the chocolate buttons in the bag. This is a little bit of a hack. Um, so I've melted it in the bag in the microwave. 10 seconds at a time, just playing around with it, massaging it until it's gone from a solid to a liquid. And I melted it already earlier and then it, it, it solidified because you know I left it. So I've actually, it was what this was one block of chocolate about two minutes ago. So what I was doing down there was just playing around and just 10 seconds like playing with it. And yeah, it, I'm, I'm tempering it in the bag as well because you can also put chocolate buttons back in there to like cool it down whilst it's in the bag. So a little bit of a hack. I'm going to cut a tiny bit off the end of the bag, making sure that that tiny piece doesn't go anywhere near our creation. Uh, thank you, Leah, for the comment as well. And we will definitely share the recipe with you. Um, now I'm going to do some milk chocolate over the top of that as well. Freestyle. Oh yes, I was I was wondering where we were going to go with the plates. I'm glad you did that. Yeah, it's, it's just dressing it up yeah, again. Yeah. You know, it's a nice thing for, as I was saying, like a dinner party or a sort of fun event like that. Any of these on the plate? Over. Do you think, yeah, Tom? It's... Or how would you do that? Yeah, nice. It's just again, it, it, you know, it, it's it's not. No, it doesn't right matter. Wrong, it's, just go for it. Yeah. It's just having a play and you know, dressing how you feel, showcasing, you know, what what you've made and enjoying doing it. That's good. Thank you, Leah, for the comment. Uh, I'm just going to show a little class. Look at that, baby. We're not done yet. Go on, sir. So, again, I've just got a little bit of strawberry puree. Um, so, again, just going to add a little bit of acidity to the plate. Again, no particular thought or worries as to where they're going. You're doing like some little blobs. Yeah, it's just going to give it a nice little acidity, just help cut it through on the plate. Um, all I've done for that is I just bought yeah. some frozen strawberries, a pop of colour as well on the plate, isn't it? Them, yeah. give them a little blitz, and then, yeah, if you just oh. heat them up in a pan, reduce it oh. down, and then pass it. Mm. Mm. Um, again, I was saying to you the other day, fro frozen fruit always gets a really bad rep. Yeah. Um, but actually, because it's frozen when it's fresh, it has a higher nutrient flavour and content. Yeah. So right. if you're cooking with it, it's really good for stuff like that. Obviously, right. it's not got the, the hard shell on the outside as much yeah. as sort of fresh strawberries. Right. But if you're eating them out of season, it's a really good way of getting a really good flavour, high nutritious mm. sort of fruit. In. Are we getting a better colour from that as well? Because that's a really vibrant red. Do you think because it's frozen fruit, maybe it retains its colour? I think sometimes, yeah, especially with vegetables yeah. as well, you know, because right. they're, fr they're frozen fresh. Yeah. I always remember yeah. the bird's eye advert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but you, you're sealing in more of that goodness and, and keeping right. it fresher. Again, it comes to just eating things at the right time of year, which again helps with the cost of things. Right. Um, That's true. You know, seasonality always makes the biggest difference. Oh, yes. So again, just a little one. And then just... I just think it would be amazing. Like, I have worked in kitchens before. Where I've worked um, as kind of a sous chef and, and prepared, like, lunch, but I've never done anything like this in a kitchen. But I just love the idea of just creating stuff like this where you're almost a little bit freestyling following you in your inspiration trying different things out and, and then going like send it out now and send that out and then you're getting like that instant feedback from customers via a waiter or waitress like that is 
quick it's a quick turnaround isn't it so yeah. with me when i make something it's usually either sent out or somebody collects it it's not that instant kind of gratification whereas in a restaurant you've got food coming out feedback coming back in yeah straight away look at that i don't know about you everybody but my mouth is watering big time let us know if you'll be using this recipe and yeah tag me and tom canoe against cancer using the hashtag canoe against cancer the hashtag chop and roll he, tom's just put a fork there does that mean most importantly you've it? got to try it oh, we're, yes. we're coming on definitely you've right, got to okay. take on the sampling so i'm gonna go a little bit quiet now um a bit of radio silence for me see the cut through in fact let me through oh that looks absolutely amazing um what a great dinner party um recipe i think this is a bit of a show stuff for this one wow hey and you can hear that crunch from the holy grail mm. as well come through i love those different textures yeah. i'm pretty have you got a fork you want to try it we're just going to go really quiet. Really <laughs> this is how the eating show. Mm, exactly. Who wants to come and try some? Anybody who's local, I'm serious. Like, just drop in. If you're an hour away or whatever, we'll wait. So. How good is that? Yeah, so good. Um, a little bit more. What do you think? What's the verdict, Tom? It's really good. The ganache really sets it off nicely as mm, well. Mm. The different textures. Always a big fan of sort of different mm. textures within food, and it, mm. it creates that different experience as you're eating it. Um, no, that's what it's all about creating an experience in the mouth yeah it's it's it's, it's having fun from, mm. from right at the beginning where we started you know we we, we made our mix it's, it's, it's you know it's having a bit of a play yeah you got a little kick of salt when that salt comes in it's like i've seen people eat the chocolate with the, and you can see the confusion but they like it but they don't know what it is at first it's like it's almost like sweet and savory but i like it when it just kind of just comes out of nowhere Boom. what's that <laughs> and again, using salt flakes for that. Yes, Anglesey sea salt. Uh, Hallam Mont is what I would highly recommend my go to brand for sea salt. I get through quite a lot, but other, other brands are available. They are, but that's my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a loyal Hallam Mont fan. It's really nice. So that's, that's a big yeah. thing. You know, my, my dad was very keen about that. And, you know, when, when you find a product and it's showcasing that, and, you know, your, your dad with the, the Coleman's mint yeah. he uses for his, yeah. his new, we were, sorry, we were oh, talking yeah, about yeah. His, his new mint triangles. You know, it's, you have to cut one so everyone can see them as well. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, look at that. It's chef's knife. This is a proper knife. Here we go. Right, so I'm going to take one off here. I'm not going to try anything on anything too dangerous. So I'm going to try and cut straight down the middle oh, uh. and how well you can see the air bubbles on that one you quite quite see that because of the light there is a picture on my dad's instagram that he's posted today and um you can clearly see the air bubbles but yeah these are have you tried it yet yes Pretty again, it's it like Coleman, Coleman's it's, mint, but he's so passionate about that mm. and why it's special and, and why you know that specific. Yeah. Cause it's um, it's black leaf. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Black now. leaf, it is the black leaf mint, uh, so it's a particularly strong grade or type of and if, mint if I'm correct in remembering, it, it, it used to be in the United Kingdom, then yeah. it lost it, and, and right. it was the Coleman's family brought it back and stuff. That's right. it, I think. It, they like harvest the it in the field, so they literally extract the the, the oil um, from the mint leaves, the flavour, literally in the field. So it's that fresh. That's why it's so good. It's so and strong. you taste it. You know, it, it just it just brings that sort of big hit in as yeah. soon as you go near it. Exactly. Uh, as soon as you walk in his shop, if he's making the mint chocolate, so you can smell it. Somebody came in uh, on Saturday and uh, and then she kept, left, and her husband sent her husband in to buy the chocolates, and he said. She sent me in for some mint chocolates, and we were like, "Oh, I wonder why." Is it because you were hit by that smell as soon as you? <laughs> it's quite interesting actually. It's only yeah. just come back to me, but the, mm. the whole reason you're involved in Canoe Against Cancer was mint chocolates, sprouts, and your dad's mint chocolate Powell. sprouts. Weird, it's, that's colourful. It's strange <laughs> to be involved in, in an indirect way. In, that's weird. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, your dad that. used to always buy the sprouts, and that was your Christmas. 
he had those instead of sprouts on his Christmas dinner, which I think is incredible. Um, yeah. Oh, that's it. Hannah's. Did you know that Hannah commented there? If, if those chocolates are like anything like the sprouts, I'm all over them. So, yes. You're already thinking the same I, there. I, I will bring some samples back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he's he's got the air into the um, into the mint chocolate center. So it's basically uh, the the industry secret of how to make an aero. Papa Chuck has decrypted it and made his own. So he's pretty happy with that. I mean, it's, it's amazing, cool. and he's really brought his own style to it as well. Yeah, that's, you know, yeah. I think that's 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 what it's about, and it's it's your own interpretation on it and, and bringing it through. There we go. That's one of his. So. Yeah, 40 years. He posted on his Instagram, 40 years in making chocolate. And it's, you know, he's only just discovered because it's all of those, like, how did they do that? And yeah, like I say, industry secret, but I won't say any more than that. Pop chocolate. Maybe he'll come on and demonstrate on a live show. What? Let us know if you'd like him to, to do that for you. We might be fueled by him on our, on our canoe against cancer. Yeah, exactly. Day, exactly. day three will be mint chocolate day. Mint, <laughs> minted. Chocolate sprouts. Yeah, because chocolate sprouts are for any time of year, not just Christmas. So, a bit like the Yule log. Yeah. Could, Swiss be, roll. could be a Yule log. Swiss roll. Yeah. I just want to eat more of that. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think we've, we've, we've covered the recipe. If anyone has any questions, let us know. And um, you can find Tom on the well we should have got a link in the comments um if you can't find the link let us know because obviously it'd be really cool if you would sponsor tom and george on their canoe against cancer but do follow their journey if you can on instagram and in the meantime I hope you do get busy creating one of these and make sure you tag us in the pictures and um, i'm off this weekend on a boys trip to abasok so i'll be probably doing some instagram stories but after a certain time they'll probably drop off until like the next day. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm going to Spain with uh, my wife, Kim, and Romy. Uh, Romy's 11 months now and is, yeah, coming along nicely. Her favourite toy is, is the lid off the, the bottle, the milk bottle. Got all these amazing toys, but that lid, no, that's got some serious competition. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to get over there with the family as well and I'll probably share some little clips of those trips with you all via Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think that pretty much concludes it. You know, anything that you think, Tom, that we've perhaps not touched on? Um, follow if, the journey. If, if, if you pass us, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting journey from our point. Um, and, and obviously it's lovely to have, you know, people on board. If, if you've got questions, it's it's really nice that people share their stories as well because yeah, it's nice to see, you know, how other hospices or other people have interacted with these charities. And, yeah, you know, I think my dad was always very much about sort of life and the experience and yeah, in keeping him alive within this journey. It's yeah. also sharing those passions. So, you know, yeah. if, if you would like to make this, please tag us in it, a hashtag canoe against cancer or send us yeah. a message. Um, I'd love to see what you're doing. If you've got any questions about it again, feel free to just send us a message. Yeah. And definitely. you've got that information any support you can give but these these are some mini i think we've got to give these some acknowledgement these are the mini rolls mini roulades that uh tom made earlier and you know that's the before and after really there so you've got the holy grail toppings beautifully presented on the plate there but yeah so like tom said earlier you can you can make these as the big showstopper or the, the mini me whatever you go for so good all the answer. buttons suppressed there i know it's really shows it's it's hard <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but no guys yeah thank you so much for joining us on the chopping roll show if you've been watching on linkedin facebook wherever you are and um, keep in touch if you want to see the recipe we'll post that in the comments i think i think he was it that leah that wants to see the recipe of course get baking have fun with the family. Don't be afraid of it. Like you said, Tom, make mistakes, learn, do it again, refine it. Just uh, yeah, just enjoy it. That's what it's all about. That's all for now. And thank you for having me. Hey, Let me come pleasure. on and do some cooking. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Sort of letting, letting what we do yeah. show together. So awesome. thank you very awesome. much. And, and thank you to everyone who's watched uh, and asked questions throughout as well. So Yeah, well, we look forward to doing more of it and bringing more creativity, chocolate, fun, craziness. Um, See you next time. Peace, love, chock and roll. <laughs> <laughs>